because I genuinely believed this is it. This is the truth. I hate religion. I thought that Christianity was something that was made to control people and lead them away from raising their consciousness levels. So that was my belief system at the time. And obviously in, in and around that time was the first time my group did Brim's Got Talent. Uh, we did quite well, we got to the final and I started a new group. And what it was, it was, uh, my group was called Nemesis and we got to the final BGT back in 2008. We made a group called KE. So the guy's name was Kyle, um, we were called Nemesis. So it was basically Kyle Nemesis Entertainment. And it was a mixture of like live vocals and dancing. I remember I got into bed and I, I lay down and immediately I felt my soul get ripped out of my body and I fell and I fell very, very, very quick. And I remember looking at that and thinking, this place doesn't look good. Now I can tell that that was, it was demonic. Wherever that was, it was very, very demonic. And then it went pitch black. And when I tell you this darkness is, you can't even see your hand here. So basically the winning of the show, the money, the house, everything. What do I need to do for this? And out of the darkness, even though it's pitch black, I could see very clearly the scroll appeared and it was a white scroll with gold trim around the edge. And it was a contract that I had to sign in blood. I was now seeing it for myself and I knew immediately what that meant and what it was. And immediately I felt myself fly back into my body. And then I opened my eyes, looked to my left, and there's this demonic entity. It looked about four feet tall, jet black, standing next to my bed, looking at me. When you're around these things, you get this immense feeling of fear that you, you can't even move, like you can't do anything. You're just stuck, almost like you're paralyzed. I'm not okay. I'm really not. Like, what did I just see? Hi, welcome to Touching the Afterlife. Our guest today is Isha. Isha has been holding back from sharing his powerful testimony, and the Lord is now releasing it. And he was an atheist, as well as involved in various occult practices, even a finalist on Britain's Got Talent. And he's here today to share with us his powerful testimony. So welcome with me today, Isha. Hi, Isha. Thank you for having me. Isha, thank you so much for being with us today. I know you have an incredible story, a powerful story you're going to share with us. So where did this all begin? Honestly, I wouldn't even know where to start because I've always been quite open to the spirit world. Uh, I didn't really know at the time what the spirit world actually was. Uh, growing up, things were always a bit strange for me. Um, I used to sort of see things, but not really know anything about it. And because you obviously when you're young, you've got a bit of an imagination anyway. So you, sometimes you think, okay, whatever, it's nothing. But one of my earliest memories in life was um, living in, I believe it was near central London. And my family lived on a second floor flat. And inside that, I managed to lock myself into my parents' bedroom. So, um, and I was locked in from the inside as well. So they, they could not get in. So they had to actually call fiber grade out to come and knock the door down and then let me out. So uh, one of my best memories of that day is my brother and sister passing digestive biscuits under the door to me so I could eat. Uh, Cause I was in there for a good, maybe couple of hours before I actually got out. And as the fire brigade were basically taking the door down, I got instructions to move away from the door, maybe go into the bed and just wait in the bed until they've knocked the door down. So I was safe. So I did that. So this memory turned into a situation where I was crawling underneath the bed under the covers and I remember kind of getting the sense that I wasn't alone. And imagine I'm calling from like where the pillow is and I'm heading down the bed. From this side, this little boy comes up like that and stops. And we're looking at each other head on. And I remember clear as day, like he didn't have a t-shirt on. He had this like dark pale skin, um, dark, dark eyes, um, shortish black hair. He looked probably similar age to me at the time. I think I was about four years old. And we just stopped and looked at each other. And then we just went like that. And he went one way, I went the other way. And you would think it's crazy. You'd think it's a dream, but I was fully conscious. I was fully awake. The door came down about 10 minutes later. Um, and I was already out the bed at that point. I hadn't gone to sleep. What I saw, I saw. So that was a bit of an indication that something had already opened a door in my life that I didn't open myself. I was already at that stage open to spiritual forces interact with me physically. So 
that kind of set the stage for my early life kind of growing up from there. So the next stage of my life was nothing short of traumatizing on a daily basis. So I used to get very, very serious spiritual attacks night after night after night after night. It was, it was vicious. Um, I got on an average night, I'd probably have about five or six different uh, horrific dreams, like horrific. Um, and this went on every single night for years. And it got to the point I actually asked for help. Now, me and my parents at the time, uh, we didn't talk as much as we do now. So I didn't really divulge a lot of the information about what was going on in my life. But I spoke to my mum about this and she said, okay, maybe don't sleep on your back, try and sleep on your side. Maybe that will help you avoid the nightmares. And it kind of worked for a bit. And it's almost like the spirits realized that I was figuring out a way to avoid the situation. So I would wake up and I would just roll on my back or not. Sorry, I wouldn't wake up. I would eat in my sleep and I'd roll onto my back and I, I would know that I've rolled onto my back in my dream because I'll be having a nice dream and then immediately it will turn into an attack and mm -hmm. it would just be brutal, nonstop, nonstop, nonstop. Um, and it got to the point where I couldn't actually wake up from the dream. So um, after a couple of years, I realized that, okay, if I can die in my dream, I will wake up and I'll wake up okay. So I used to try, when I, when I knew I was getting into one of these dreams, I could feel it because when these things are around you, it's like you can feel the energy from them and for some people, it's this kind of feeling of absolute fear where you feel like you can't even move, like you feel paralyzed. And this was the early stage of that. It wasn't as bad, but it was like the early stages of that kind of sensation that I used to feel then. So I used to feel it coming. So I was thinking, right, I need to jump out of a window. I need to run into a road and be hit by a car. Like that's generally how I used to think in my dreams to wake myself up. And for a period of time that worked as well. And then they realized, okay, that's what he's doing. So they will then change scenarios. So if I'm trying to run out on the road, all of a sudden there's no cars. Or if I'm trying to jump out of a window, all of a sudden there's no window there. So those, they started blocking that as well. They'll try and find any way to keep me there. Obviously at the time, I didn't realize that I was spiritually traveling. I wasn't, my spirit wasn't in my body. So if they trap you out there long enough, it's like you have an empty vessel here that's just waiting for demonic possession or demonic influence to a high degree. So it's in their interest to keep you out of your body. So yeah, things things were like that for quite some time. And this but, was yeah, in your was, dreams. Was this was in your dreams, correct? Yeah. Every single night. I used to have at least six, seven of these every night without fail. Can you talk a little bit about is I'm not super familiar with the astro projection. I know you're going to go into that later, but is this a form mm. of it? Yes, um, it's a form of it. It was something that I was doing unconsciously from whatever age I could remember to tell you the truth. So astral projection essentially is a, a way in which you can separate your, your spirit from your body. Now, there's a process that you can actually go through and learn, which allows you to practice it and then be able to do it on will. So I used to be in communities of people who used to practice it and they would manifest in your room if they wanted to and I, it, was, it was really strange, actually, because I knew that I could do it. And I knew it wasn't because I, I was training to do it, but it was almost like a switch I couldn't turn on or off. It just happened when it happened, but I didn't have control. So as I got a bit older, I then kind of moved away from being more of an atheist and kind of moved into the New Age movement. And that's when I started learning all the techniques for how to astral project, how to train yourself, how to do it. Uh, the lucid dreaming, because they're not the same thing. Some people believe that lucid dreaming and astral projection are the same thing. They're two completely different practices. Uh, one of them is actually being conscious and being able to affect your dreams. That's what lucid dreaming is. So it's almost like you wake up in your dream and realize, hold on a minute, I'm actually dreaming. So then you can start manipulating your environment to have a better experience in your dream. That's what lucid dreaming is. Astral projection is when you physically remove your spirit from your body to the point where you can actually stand up in your bed look at your body as if you're dead. Like some of the testimonies I've seen on your channel before where people talk about, oh, I feel good. My chest doesn't hurt anymore. And then they look down and see their dead body and they're like, ah, I'm gone. It's similar to that basically, except it's a conscious choice you're making to separate your spirit. And you can actually see your body. You can see everything in the room around you, but things look different. 
Um, it almost looks like you've got supervision. You've got you've got powers you normally have. You could fly through the ceiling. You could just float away. Um, you've got amazing vision. I could see into people's houses. Um, it was it's it's some it's unreal. It's something else. But I didn't do it for the purpose necessarily of traveling. Um, it was more to connect to the spirit world because the belief system around that is kind of in that sort of direction where you have what they used to call ascended masters or spirit guides. So that was the kind of direction I went in. But I'll, I'll come back to that in a bit. Um, that was kind of the next stage of life. But yeah, it's, it kind of developed through a YouTube channel that I used to watch. And ironically, the channel that got me into it was also the channel that freed me from it at the same time. Uh, over a period of about four or five years, I think, I went in and I went out through the same vice that locked me in, in the first place. But um, I'll, I'll come back to that shortly. But just kind of going back into like the childhood sort of neck of the woods. So after a period of time, uh, the nightmares got severe and I was trying to figure out ways in which I could manage them. Now, one thing that I always found interesting about a lot of my nightmares is I always felt like I was falling. I always felt like I was going, if I was going into a nightmare, I'll be falling. There was one dream I used to have quite a lot as well, where I would be on my mattress as a child and I'll be in a house that's unfamiliar to me. And it's almost like a stairwell that goes in like a square and it goes up like that, spirals up. And I'll see people walking up the stairs, but my mattress is falling down the middle of the shaft, right down the middle. And I remember there was one when my dad was kind of reaching out, trying to grab me to save me. And I'll just fall into this dark pit. And then I'll wake up in my bed. And when I'm in the pit, it's pitch black, but I could see certain lights and certain things. And then as my eyes adjust, I'm, those lights and things like the light from my alarm clock, as an example, like the red light, I'll see something else and it will be like another light that's coming from the street light outside, which kind of indicates that I could still see things, but I was halfway conscious, halfway not conscious, but I was still seeing it. So it was like the early stages of me kind of being familiar with the fact that there are things out there that aren't easy to explain. But because I wasn't a Bible reader, I didn't really engage with that at all. I actually hated the idea of religion because I hated going to church. I was, uh, my mom was raised Catholic um she's not a catholic anymore but we went to a catholic church in north london i think it's called the church of england and i absolutely hated it absolutely hated it um i didn't get a feeling that i was learning anything i didn't get a feeling that there was any sort of love it to be honest with you i just i was bored i was really really bored and i dreaded going there every single sunday the best time of my life was the hour when i left <laughs> so that automatically pushed me away but one thing I find very interesting is a lot of people that go down the New Age route came from Catholicism. There's not that many that come from atheism or strict atheism. A lot of these guys used to be Catholics or Mormons who started to realize there were things wrong with their, with their sect and they look for something and they tend to look for the thing that's the most opposite to what they were raised in. And the New Age movement is absolutely perfect for them in a, in a sort of way because it's, it just accepts everybody. And it puts power into your hands to say, you are the God. It's your energy. You can manifest whatever you like, similar to Scientology. All of these sort of new age sects have very similar ideas. They're all very separate, but they all lead in the same direction, which is you are God. You can mm -hmm. manifest. You need to raise us to the fifth dimension so we can break out of this consciousness and join what we used to call, interestingly enough, Christ consciousness. Mm -hmm. And that was the field we needed to get to for perfection where we then become creator gods and we're happy and we can create our own environment and that's the kind of direction the new age movement was going in and you could do that by connecting to your higher self or as we used to call it the divine feminine um which is another very interesting thing because when you look at how they are changing the world around at the moment where they're trying to make women men and men women uh one agenda they're attacking is the masculine male it's quite obvious to anybody who looks at what's going on on TV to, to see that they're attacking masculinity. They see it as, like they say, toxic masculinity. They don't like it. And they raise the idea of women becoming men in that aspect. And it's just another attack on God's order. It's just about removing the ideology of what a man was meant to be, what a man, woman was meant to be, and the unit they become when they come together. And it's an attack on that. So all of these practices, as you come out of it and you see the truth, you see the reasons why certain belief systems are in place and how it's leading you away from God. 
and all of it is designed to lead you as far away from the Lord as humanly possible and put all of the power into your hands. And that is the direction I took as my next phase. So it was, yeah, it was pretty intense. So the next kind of part kind of then led into all the astral projection. Um, and then I flew out to Ireland and had quite an experience out there as well. Um, so yeah, it was pretty intense. That was in and around sort of 12, 13 years old. Wow. I think it's interesting how the devil tries to play from this playbook of, I'm going to meet a need that you have, a longing, an emptiness, and it starts off looking good, but little did you know how demonic it is. So tell Mm. us, Isha, how it went from there at 13. What happened next? Yeah, so um, I went from where I was at that point, and I was like, yep, I'm just fully atheist. Um, The dreams were still quite bad. Um, And then as I kind of grew um what really triggered it so this was probably nearer to about i would say 16 years old is probably when it started and um, a family member introduced me to a youtube channel called spirit science and i remember watching a video i think it was called the video of creation and all it is is an alternative explanation of what happened from creation all the way through to where we are now and what we need to do to get back to where we were before. Now, at the time, obviously, I wasn't a Bible reader. I didn't know any of the stories of the Bible. Now I kind of look back. Um, I'm still getting to grips with the Bible. I'm reading it. Um, that's one of the things I've really made a covenant with God recently to say, I am going to get better with reading my Bible, because if you don't know the Bible, you don't know God. So I'm making more of an effort to go through it. But I knew elements of the Bible from certain sections already, and I knew a lot of the stories, so I could draw parallels to what I was doing before and what I believed in and what the New Age movement was trying to lead me towards. So like we all know, right, the devil, he doesn't really create anything. He uses us. We're the ones that create things, but he uses us to create his world and his vision, right? Now, if he's not creative, what is he going to do? He's going to counterfeit So Mm -hmm. the whole spirit science video, it mirrors almost perfectly with Genesis. So Mm -hmm. it talks about how at the beginning we were amazing beings. We had this, like, um, what's the word for it? It's memory, which was like, like a movie. You could remember everything from your first day up until that point, like a, like a movie, 4K, like brilliant memory, amazing vision. You can see everything and anything. All your senses are heightened. And that's basically a description of the spirit world and how we are when we go to heaven, which ironically is what was like what it was like in the Garden of Eden before they fell. So it's again mirroring what happened in the Garden of Eden. And then it describes a time where people fell and there was a great fall. They call it the great fall. They don't explain why it happened. They just say that we fell and we lost our memory. We lost a lot of our strength. Our lives became shorter and we fell down in consciousness. That's what they say it is. And then they say um, we have, I think it was about 24,000 years to go back to Christ consciousness. And if we don't achieve it, then we will never go back. So that whole ideology was you have to meditate. You have to raise your vibration, your energy, like people like to say. And you need to raise that to a level where as if everybody gets to that level, the energy fields around the world will be strengthened and you could raise the world into the next dimension, which is going to be a much better dimension. Everyone's going to be happier. It's all love, all singing, all dancing. And the people that were doing this work were mostly called either like star seeds or uh, indigo children. And I remember asking someone what the difference was. And one woman told me indigo children were born in 1987 and before, I believe. And star seeds were after that. So they considered me like an indigo child. Um, And for anyone who's wondering what this vibe is with Chris Brown, when he's talking about indigo, especially he made an album, I believe, called Indigo. Now you can see why. And that's why it's got all this sort of mystic pagan imagery on the video. And anyone that's been on his most recent tour would have seen very strange imagery, including like devilish looking cherubim in the background, like massive statues. When you know these things, you start to draw the lines and you see, okay, they're, they're telling pag- pagan stories, essentially, but they're hiding it and wrapping it around things like entertainment and artistry and 
spirituality is like basically the, the buzzword for it, right? So they're just hiding it in plain sight. So I was learning all of this knowledge and I was like, oh my days, this is the truth. This, this is it. This is what I can do because people always want to get their hands on something that is tangible. They don't want to have faith. People want to have control. But mm. what that is, is pride. People right. want to have that pride to say, I, me, I did this. I did that. My works did this. And that's ultimately what led people to fall in the first place. They believed, oh, well, I need to have all that knowledge. Why is God holding out on me? That's the lie that Satan told Eve in the Garden of Eden. And it's the same lie that he's telling us now. You guys have got this. You guys can do this yourself. You need to raise your consciousness level. You've got to work hard on that. And together we're going to come up to the fifth, fifth dimension and live amazing, beautiful lives. Um, and a lot of people that believe that will then wake up in hell. And they're not going to be happy that they were deceived so easily. Um, and I went all the way down that rabbit hole. Um, and it all leads in one direction. Once you go down that way, it leads down to the alien deceptions. And I found my way to things like the Pleiadians. Um, so there's a whole belief system of aliens in space. You'll probably see it from ancient astronaut theory and stuff like that. It's always on History Channel and Sky, um, interestingly enough. And they'll talk about things like this, like the ancient civilizations. And they'll always attribute it to aliens. But never do they consider the fact that these aliens could actually just be demonic spirits from another realm uh they always have to say it's, it's aliens when in reality it's just demons and fallen angels they're essentially the same thing it's just hollywood has trained people to see aliens as one thing and demons and god as another so we need to bring those things together because they're very much the same now i used to watch videos of people channeling alien entities um i, I think they used to call it the council of light and the belief system around that is there's an alien galactic federation that it wants to help mankind and we're trapped in this prison and we can't get out of it. So they're basically trying to help us spiritually. They're going to send people down to help us and they're going to raise the consciousness level so that we can break out of this um, 3D prison and come into the fourth dimension and the fifth dimension and then join our space brothers and sisters in a better life where we can travel around the solar system. That is kind of where that belief system goes. They also have things like the Archons they believe in, uh, the Anunnaki, which is also on the History Channel on the ancient alien theories. They believe the Archons and the Anunnaki were the ones that actually created mankind. And they have the drawings of these beings, very, very tall with like almost like pelican heads. And they're, they're actually drawn on the side of Egyptian uh, temples and pyramids. And they believe them to be the Anunnaki, who were the ones that came from space. and they fought a, a galactic war. They took over Earth and they enslaved all of mankind to do all of their work. And we're still on the roll now. And this this whole reptilian theory that we're controlled by this reptilian race, um, which is also very interesting when you look at some of the testimonies I've seen on some channels and they describe some of the demons they see in hell as having scaly skin and eyes like reptiles. So if that's not another indication that you're being deceived and that mm. what you're seeing are actually demonic entities masquerading as aliens or something else the parallels become very very obvious and it was quite fortunate for me because i've always had the mentality that okay look i'm quite strong in my belief however i will always entertain the idea that i could be wrong because i always want to ensure that i'm on the right path no matter what it is i don't want to be fooled or misled even though for a very long time i was because i genuinely believed this is it this is the truth i hate religion i thought that Christianity was something that was made to control people and lead them away from raising their consciousness levels. So that was my belief system at the time. And then I went to the next step where I was, I was starting to actually practice astral projection. Um, this was in and around 20, 20, I'll say 2014, roughly. I started practicing it because I couldn't do it on will. Um, and I wanted to be able to just lie down, meditate, bang, I'm out and I can fly around and have fun. So I started practicing the techniques. I watched a lot of videos on it. Um, I started practicing quite a lot. Now, nine times out of 10, when I tried to do it, especially at night, I would just fall asleep. But then my spirit would separate by itself because I had it from birth. I was always open to the spirit world. So there'll be times where I'll, I'll try it and I'll go through the phases. They're like certain things that normally you'd feel before you know your spirits exited your body. Uh, one of them is you start seeing like flashing lights. 
then everything starts to shake. It's like you're in an earthquake. And then out of nowhere, everything goes still. And then you would float out of your body. And that's the last phase before you come out. And then you can travel. Um, so I used to practice that all the time. And I used to have, I would say unofficial spirit guides. Because I used to have these dreams where I was being shown things. Um, I had one where I was being shown how to mask my energy. So this, I remember being chased. It looked like I was in the middle of Italy or something along those sort of lines, like Venice. And I was running through the streets and there was a crowd chasing me. And this being was kind of talking to me. I couldn't see it, but I could hear it. And it was saying, do this. And then they, they won't be able to find you. So I would like concentrate in a certain type of way. Then all of a sudden, th these people were looking around like, where did, where did he go? And they can't find me anywhere. And I knew, and there was another child there as well. He looked maybe 15. He was also being trained by these entities. I knew that he was a real person from somewhere, but he was going through training the same way I was. And that was just one example of all the things they were trying to show me. There was another dream that I had where I was trying to project. And they were showing me the constellations in the sky because these things are very important to them. They base a lot of their ideology off what the stars are doing. So they, I remember I was flying through space. Now, I believe this potentially to be either in the second heaven or leading towards the second heaven. And I was flying through space and I was seeing planets just flying by. Like I was going at a ridiculous speed. And then I stopped at this one planet. And it was, um, I wouldn't say it was a, a big planet. It was relatively small. Um, at least from the vantage point that I had, I was kind of floating above it. And I remember looking at it and it was a black, black planet with a massive black skull on the top of the planet. And there was lightning flashing all around it. I remember the voice because they don't talk to you like we talk to each other. It's, it's telepathic. So I could hear what he was saying and he could hear what I was thinking. And I remember him saying to me, this is where we're from. And I remember looking at that and thinking, this place doesn't look good. But mm. I'm still not putting everything together at this point because I'm, I'm still not going down the route of I might be wrong. Um, but it just looked dark. And looking back at it now, I can tell that, that was, it was demonic. Wherever that was, it was very, very demonic. Um, and then I went back into my body. And I had lots of experiences like that where I'd come out my body, I'd fly around. There was one I saw as well, which I think you might find very interesting. I don't think I told you this one before. So I had a astral projection where I believed I went into one of the heavens because the floors were paved with gold. There was massive, almost like castles, but it was beautiful, absolutely beautiful. Um, but on my way out of my body, I remember flying through the roof and I could see into someone's house. And what I used to call them was shadow people. So what we used to believe in the New Age movement were what we would perceive as demons. We used to call them shadow people. And they were to be kind of avoided. I remember looking into someone's ceiling and seeing into their bedroom. And there was somebody lying on their bed. And one of these shadow people was standing next to their bed, looking at them, this tall, dark, demonic looking spirit. And it almost looked like it was sucking energy out of them. I could see almost like this rainbow of light coming out of this person's face, going into the demon's mouth, almost like it was absorbing their energy. And I just saw it as, oh, the shadow people are just, because they feed on fear, that's what we believed. Um, it's just feeding on fear. Nothing's going to happen to the person. They're asleep. It's fine. It didn't really register me, to me like that. Um, but what I find interesting is I watched another testimony of someone who went to hell. And it's not the only person I've seen who's talked about this where they said they saw these demonic entities attacking people. And the ones that they really enjoyed attacking the most were people who used to be in the presence of God, ex-Christians who have fallen, uh, people who were lukewarm Christians who might have a little bit of God within them, but not enough. Um, because these people had a light inside them because God is light. Without God, there is no light, uh, which is why hell is nothing but darkness. It's God's light that lights up everything. And when you're in the presence of God, you have that light. And when you then leave the presence, there's still some of that light inside you. And these demonic entities feed on that and they extract it out of you. And it just mirrored and something in my, in my spirit triggered and said, ah, that's probably what I was seeing. It's probably one of these demons in someone's house absorbing that light from someone who's either a fallen away Christian or someone who's kind of lukewarm and not done enough to be in the presence of the Lord but at some point has been, and it's just sucking it in. And immediately I was like, I, I know what I saw. I know what I saw. 
and it was it was terrible it was terrible and not too long after that is the first time i really asked the question what am i doing here and at this stage i was i was kind of open to a lot of different things but i was still kind of adamant i'm on the right path what i'm doing is correct i'm good i was involving other people i was telling people about what i was doing um i had my spirit guides they were helping me with the knowledge like i told you earlier um but something just felt wrong now this is where god is truly amazing because the person i am right now is completely different to the person i was back then um and god did absolute wonders bringing me out of where i was because i didn't ask for his help like i didn't call for him i didn't say save me i didn't even know i needed to be saved and even still he saw something that told him i need to do something to help him and that type of grace you you can't even begin to process like he will save people that don't even deserve to be saved and i don't feel i deserved it at that stage i didn't i don't feel i did anything even remotely close to deserving his mercy because that's ultimately what he gave me so god always works in mysterious ways like they say right and he will give you signs he doesn't always answer your question directly um sometimes he'll just throw you something that tells you okay i i hear the message i'm going to do it so and i get that a lot that's more what i get it will, if i pray on something and i ask him something i will get loads of different things thrown at me that gives me the answer i was looking for and very quickly um and there was one day so spirit science was the channel that got me into all of this belief system in the first place um so one day i am on youtube looking for a spirit science video and up pops one of the two main guys that made the channel and he has got a testimony on there saying he's now left the channel and i was like okay maybe he had a dispute with the other guy or something right and i watched the video and it was basically him talking about how he had a run in with christ he was really depressed he wasn't happy he didn't enjoy life and christ appeared to him and saved him he then had a deliverance where he had to have the demonic entities taken out of him at church um he went into a church and he was convulsing um he had a terrible time he was being attacked severely um and eventually he was delivered and he left the new age movement and then i thought hmm this is one of the main creators and obviously this is the first time i'm hearing of an encounter with jesus because that's not a name i heard much so then i thought this is strange because he described in his testimony that he questioned the beings because he had ascended masters and uh, spirit guides and things like that and he he mentioned in his thing that he started questioning them to say who are you and do you know jesus what is your relationship to jesus he started asking those questions and they started to manifest as the dark demonic entities they actually are because like we said they masquerade as angels of light so they can turn into whatever they believe you'll receive the best they're not going to show up as something that you're going to run away from because you're not going to listen they're always right. going to turn up as a family member or a friend an animal something cute something they know you need and they'll give that to you and you got to bear in mind that these demonic entities have assignments from your birth they are with you your entire life same as your same as your guardian angels the demons are there as well in in hordes you have multiple demons on you every day for your whole life they know everything about you and they will give you information which is why some of these people that do channelings they sometimes will get credible information about someone because they're not talking to a dead family member they're talking to the demonic entity that's been following that person their entire life these demons know you better than you know yourself which is how they can deceive you and send you these thoughts into your mind that makes you sin and then you think how did how did i do that why did i do that but they know the triggers they know what to give you to lead you to sin and they will do everything they can subtly just to move you over move you further move you further away from the lord and that's that's their goal that's all they do and i i watched that and i thought okay this is weird because i've got spirit guides and like i said i like to question everything so i thought okay i need to do the same thing i need to 
reconsider this. And then I don't know if you would know the name of the woman. Um, one of the most famous, um, I think it's called tarot card readers. Um, she had a whole range around the world, the most famous in the world for it. She did palm readings, seances. She then converted to Christianity as well. And she was getting absolutely slandered from the whole new age empire. They were saying, oh, she's done it for the money because there's more money selling fake products to Christians. She actually lost money. She had a massive, I don't know how many bedroom house, I think in Texas, she lost the house. But God is worth it. God is worth that sacrifice. And she left it as well. She had an account with Jesus. And that tells you everything you need to know. So I, I saw that and I thought, okay, I need to question this. So the next time I saw them, um, I asked the question and I said, do you know Jesus? Is Jesus real? And I went straight back into my body. And then I was like, right, what's, what's going on here? And it just felt, it felt dark. Some, I felt like there was a very dark presence around me. And then this then earmarks the period where I started a very slow conversion to Christianity because I started getting attack after attack after attack. And these were vicious attacks, like very, very bad attacks, worse than my childhood. And they attacked me in every way possible. They went after my health. They went after me financially. They went after me spiritually. Um, they would threaten everything and anything they can, including family. They, they went after me in a very, very big way. And it was, it was violent. So obviously I've had that first experience and I'm not completely out of the new age movement, but I felt a certain type of way. So I was one night in bed and I was doing a bit of meditation because I wanted to do some astral projection and halfway through this pattern appeared on my ceiling. It was like, um, almost like the flower of life. It was like a cage around my roof and it was like burning red and I could see it. And I was like, that's, that's new. I've never seen that before. And then I remember falling asleep, but I was like, it was like I was sucked out of my body. And I was in this massive field, like a grassy hay field. And I looked up and this giant demonic looking old man's head was coming down from the sky with his mouth open, like he was going to eat me. And I knew because when you're in the spirit world, everything is more real than it is here. You can't, it's hard to explain unless you've actually seen it or felt it, but your senses, your feeling, pain, hunger, tiredness, everything, your vision, all your senses are heightened. It is way more real than what you feel here. And I knew this spirit was coming to eat me. I knew because of what I felt before. So I knew then it was a demon. Now, I wasn't thinking in the sense that, oh, my days, I need to call out to anybody because I didn't know who to call out to. But I knew that something was coming to eat my soul. And it just kept, it probably got to about maybe five or six meters from coming down to me. And then it disappeared. And right behind it in the clouds, it was pretty far away, but I could still make out the clouds opened up like that. And there was bright light coming down. And inside the light, I could see three figures. There was one here, one here, and one here. And they were just looking down at me. And I could see them. It was like they were sitting on a cloud. And they were looking right down at me. Now, at the time, I didn't immediately put together who or what I was seeing. I just knew that whoever that was had just saved me. Um, and it wasn't just one of them. There was three distinctive figures in the sky. And obviously now I look back, I know that it was jesus yahweh the holy spirit and they were looking down on me i know that now um and they saved me that was the first time that they saved me and it wasn't going to be the last either um and that's one of the examples where i say i didn't deserve it i, I it was not like the others where people call out to jesus and he appears i didn't even call out i didn't know to call out but he saved me anyway um which was it's powerful that's really really powerful um uh, it's, it's crazy when you think about it now. Um, the person that I could have been if he didn't show up, it's, uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's something else. Absolutely something else. So, yeah, things got bad. I, I had attack after attack just like this for a period of time. 
Um, and obviously in, in and around that time was the first time my group did Brim's Got Talent. Uh, we did quite well. We got to the final. Uh, the show in itself was a bit of an experience up and down, but it was it was an amazing experience for us. We were quite young. We were about 20 years old, I believe, at the time when we did it. Um, fully unprepared for the entertainment industry. Nobody prepared us for it. Uh, it's got its good side, but it also has a very dark side to it as well, uh, which we were lucky not to experience all of it. But I knew it was there. I could feel it. And I could see certain people. Um, you probably want to avoid them. I could just feel it. But that, again, because I was open spiritually from a young age, I had a good, good power of discernment. I could discern somebody's energy and someone's intentions very quickly. Just from looking at them, I could see very quickly that's a dark soul or that's a, a good soul. I can tell. Um, and a lot of people I was around, I could feel it. These are not good people at all. It, they're dark, extremely dark. Um, and there's there's others that would have had it a lot worse than us. Um, now, fast forward a little bit, and I started a new group. And what it was, it was, uh, my group was called Nemesis. And we got to the final BGT back in 2008. And we teamed up with another singer from a group called Fundamental. And we made a group called k &E. So the guy's name was Kyle. Um, we were called Nemesis. So it was basically Kyle Nemesis Entertainment. And it was a mixture of like live vocals and dancing. So we kind of started, it was going quite well. And... I remember speaking to him and I was saying, look, we need to make a pact that no matter what is thrown at us, we we stay right with God because I know how these things run and I know the temptations that are going to be there. And at this point, I was starting to get my head around Christianity, but I hadn't made a solid decision on where I was going to be uh, because I, I, I knew those other religions. So I was like, okay, I need to look into this further, but I know that whatever I was doing before was not okay. So I started sort of shutting those doors. I'd stopped meditating. I'd stopped doing all the new age practices, all the crystals, uh, the healing, um, ayahuasca, DMT, all of those sort of things that open you up to the spirit world, open your third eye or awaken your chakras, avoid all of that. Yoga, avoid it. People think yoga is completely harmless. It is not. Yoga is an ancient practice and the positions you put yourself in are positions to worship different types of pagan deities and it's invoking that spirit into your body so you don't want to do it you really do not want to do it it's packaged as some beautiful thing that's going to help you be calm you're invoking spirits and you don't even know it so rather than kind of assume that what you're doing is innocent and it's not going to hurt anyone you might want to research it look at the roots of things like yoga see who created it what they were into will give you a bit of an idea of what it is you're following. Same with the New Age movement. I would advise anybody that's still doing it now who's involved in crystals, uh, who's involved in the ayahuasca, the DMT, spirit guides, um, all of that sort of stuff. If you have spirits that you're talking to, question that spirit. Because if you're even remotely smart, you're going to want to know who you're dealing with. And if there's a potential that you could be deceived, you're going to want to know the truth. I wanted to know the truth and I found it the hard way, the very hardest way. So if you're if you're down that road right now and you're feeling unsure about the decisions you made or you'd like to see if there is a truth that is bigger than the truth that you were led to believe, question the spirits. Like the Bible says, question the spirits. The ones that do not come with Christ's doctrine are not correct spirits. And you're, you will get your answer. You will get the truth because they will not lie to you. Not when it comes to that. They will tell you the truth and they'll manifest as they are. So if you are going down that path, please do that. Close the doors immediately. If you can find a church, find a church. And most importantly, open a Bible and just read. Even if you're skeptical, what's the harm in reading? If you still disagree after you finish the book, it's fine. It's like someone saying to you, watch this film, it's amazing. And you say, nah, even though you've not watched the film, how can you say it's rubbish? You can't say it's a bad film. You're prejudging, but people do that with the Bible all the time. You prejudge the book before you've actually read the book based on weird interpretations or on like incorrect historical facts about how the Bible was used to control people and to manipulate people. That that could be true, but you could use anything for positive or, ne or negative. 
if somebody uses the Bible in the wrong way, that doesn't mean the Bible's wrong. It means the person is wrong. And that's something people can't get their heads around. Christianity didn't enslave Africa, as an example. White slave owners enslaved Africa using the Bible. Doesn't mean the Bible's wrong. Doesn't mean that the Bible's evil. It just means that people used it as a tool to enslave other people. So you need to remember that when you're thinking about these things and think, well, no, because I don't want to be like that person. Well, that, that person isn't like the person in the book they're holding. And that's something that you need to always keep in mind. So anyway, going, going back to what I was saying. Um, so I got really badly ill. This, I think this was around 2017 now. I got really ill. Um, I had a chest infection and I had tonsillitis. Um, I went to a hospital with a 41 degree fever, I believe it was. Um, they gave me some pretty good medication and sent me home. So I went home, I went straight to bed and I was lying in bed. And obviously, like I said to you earlier, there's a process you go through when you want to astral project. You have to think, you have to see the lights, everything shakes, and then you come out your body, right? I remember I got into bed and I, I lay down and immediately I felt my soul get ripped out of my body and I fell and I fell very, very, very quick. And I remember thinking, whoa, what on earth just did that? And I remember thinking, this is not a normal spirit that's attacked me this time. This one is very, very powerful. It's a principality at the very least that has done this one, probably even the devil himself. and. I was shown a vision and within that vision, I saw my dance group, Kaney, on stage at Brain's Got Talent getting a standing ovation from four judges, all of them standing clapping. Uh, this is the audition stage of the show. I then saw my group on the stage in the final of the show, getting a standing ovation and being awarded the winners of the show for that year. I then got an image of me and my girlfriend and our son at the time walking around the park and it was beautiful you could tell that the area we were in was amazing we had a massive house we had loads of money we were rich beyond belief and we were walking home and i remember opening the front door to go back into the house and i saw my body sleeping at the end of the hallway it was the same house that i was in and i saw myself sleeping and then it went pitch black and when I tell you this darkness is, you can't even see your hand here. It is darkness. I don't know if that's the second heaven where um, Lucifer is or whether that was hell itself, but it was complete and utter darkness. And a voice from within me, I don't know if it was my spirit talking, was saying, what do I need to do for all of this? So basically the winning of the show, the money, the house, everything. What do I need to do for this? And out of the darkness, even though it's pitch black, I could see very clearly the scroll appeared and it was a white scroll with gold trim around the edge. And it was a contract that I had to sign in blood. Now, luckily for me, because I like to do my research on things, especially if I realize something I've been doing isn't right, I'm going to research it like there's no tomorrow to figure out what I was doing wrong. So I'd seen lots of videos of people talking about being offered a contract by the devil. I'd never really quite believed it, but I was now seeing it for myself and I knew immediately what that meant and what it was. Now, I didn't even have to say no to the contract. I didn't even reject the contract. I just had the thought in my head and that was enough. The spirit can hear your thoughts. And immediately I felt myself fly back into my body. And then I opened my eyes, looked to my left and there's this demonic entity. It looked about four feet tall, jet black, standing next to my bed, looking at me. It didn't say anything, but... When you're around these things, that you get this immense feeling of fear that you, you can't even move, like you can't do anything. You're just stuck, almost like you're paralyzed. And I, I remember looking at it and it, it stood there and then it started slowly disappearing. And then my partner walked into the room just behind it as it disappeared. and was asking if I was okay. And I was like, I'm not okay. I'm really not. Like, what did I just see? Now, fast forward about two weeks, I get a phone call from ITV saying we want your new group on our show and the timing wasn't lost on me that i got an offer for my group to win that sh that show if i sold my soul we would have won that show and at first i said to the guys i don't i don't want to do it 
And then we thought, you know what, actually, let's let's just give it a try. It's a bit of fun. We're not going to take it seriously. And then we got knocked out in the semifinals. And there was a, a lot of things that happened. I'm not sure if I'm contractually allowed to say exactly what happened. Um, I know that the week of the semifinal, our music got completely changed. Um, so we couldn't use our music that we had prepped up until that point, which meant we had to mm. change our whole routine. So mm. we went out in the semifinal stage. Um, and then after that, we kind of toured for a bit and then COVID came in and then that shut down the whole entertainment industry. So we didn't really do any work at that point. But by then, I'd already made the decision that Christianity is the route that I'm going to take because I researched all of the religions. I was like, I can't, I can't be wrong again. I can't be wrong again. I need to make sure that what I do next is going to be the right path because there's a lot at stake here. So I researched Islam. I researched Judaism. I researched Buddhism. Now, Buddhism, I wrote off very quickly because it's so similar to the New Age movement. Um, the way you do things, um, the idea of the energy and things like that was just too similar to New Age. So I, I wrote that off immediately. I was like, no, um, I'm looking for something that doesn't match up with what I was doing before because it's more, more likely that if something shares ideologies, especially so closely with what I was doing, that was virtually, it, well, not even virtually, it was Luciferian then I know there's a very good chance that it's been tainted by the same brush. So I need to move on to something else. So I research, research, research. One thing I noticed is every single one of those religions are works-based. You go to heaven or you go to Nirvana or you go to wherever your holy forever place will be because of how many good things you do in this life. Your good thing can outweigh your bad. And as long as you do enough, you'll end up going up there and you're good. That is pretty much every belief system that I saw. There were smaller things within those belief systems that I didn't like. Some things in Islam, some things in Judaism. But then with Christianity, when I read the Bible, you have this immediate knowing of truth. And I read it and I was like, this is it. This is the truth. It explains perfectly. Then I started to research and realized that Jesus is overarchingly seen as the savior. And then I thought, isn't it interesting that, because I, I'm, I'm, I'm very logical in how I think. I always like to think, okay, what makes sense here? There's always patterns and things. You can always see patterns, right? And I found it very interesting that all of the, I'll say the big three, right? Which would be Christianity, Islam, and Judaism. All of them have one thing in common. They believe the Torah, the Old Testament, and they believe in Jesus. I find that very interesting. However, the Bible, if you read that, it doesn't believe in Muhammad. It doesn't believe in, in the Kabbalah or Judaism as a whole as it is now. It rebukes them, but it does not, it, it just doesn't agree. But the others have to agree with that. But then they change small things like in Islam where they say, okay, well, Jesus is only a prophet. He was great. He was amazing, but he's only just a prophet, right? So they re reduce what he was. Um, and then I thought to myself, isn't it interesting that they have to do that? Because when I think about the perfect lie, because the New Age movement is exactly that, it's perfect lies with a little bit of truth. Um, oh, sorry, it's the other way around. It's a lot of truth with a tiny bit of lie. And that tiny bit of lie is what leads you astray. So mm. I looked at that and I thought, it's very interesting because if I was going to, if I was the devil and I wanted to lead people away from God, I would tell a lot of truth and then add a sprinkling of lie because it's harder to detect. Now, everyone seemed to agree with this book other than very small parts that change things. But that very small change is just enough to lead you away from the creator. And it's the only one that did that. And I found that very interesting because that fits in with the perfect lie theory. So immediately I thought, okay, there's a red hair in there. These guys seem to be agreeing and also perverting the message of this particular book. And then you look at the world. I, was, I worked in entertainment. I've seen how things are. You can mock Christ, you can mock Christianity all day long in entertainment and no one will bat an eyelid. But do you ever see anybody mocking Muhammad at the Oscars, at MTV Awards? Do you ever see that? Do you ever see anyone say anything about Judaism? Because it didn't go well for Kanye. <laughs> so, I mean, people don't do that. But yet you see little Nas X putting out music videos of him on the cross. And people just have to be okay with that. People mock Christianity all day long in entertainment. 
Sam Smith, all these other artists, Beyonce. Um, and one thing I wanted to add when it comes to the music videos, if people watch these videos and truly understand them, you will start to realize that what you're watching is a baptism into Satanism. In Christianity, for anyone watching who doesn't already know, baptism is almost like a um, visual representation of your rebirth into the faith. So you're cleaning away all of your old sin yourself and you're coming out reborn, which is essentially what baptism does for you. Now, imagine the same process in reverse and you're going into the world of Satan because as we know, Satan doesn't create, he counterfeits. So he takes the idea of baptism and changes it into baptism into his kingdom, which is the kingdom of this world. Satan owns this world. He runs this world. Anything you're going to get from this world to a high level, you're going to get from him unless God blesses you enough to allow you to have those things. Otherwise, it's coming from him. So it's very interesting when you watch some of these videos, you see the concept of baptism in the videos in reverse. If you look at The weekend, I don't remember the video trail that he did. There was a video of him um, on stage singing a song. I don't know if it was um, I Place If I'm With You. I don't know if it was that video. And he's on stage and he's singing. And you, if you look at the crowd, nobody cares. And then this demonic looking devil figure is in the crowd. And then he turns him on fire. And then he starts dancing and he starts singing. And all of a sudden the whole crowd's like, oh my God, you're amazing. That is almost like a baptism into Satanism. And he sees the same figure over and over through the same video and other videos as well. And it's like he was baptized into Satanism and into his new cult. And it shows the process of, oh, just sell your soul and you'll be famous tomorrow. Sell your soul and you're going to become the biggest recording artist within a week. That's what these people do. And yeah. they show it in the videos. They like to show you things in plain sight because it trains your mind to accept that reality without realizing it. Beyonce did the same thing when she signed with Jay-Z. She did a video where she went into some water. She was normal Beyonce. She fell in some water and then she came out different. And she came out wearing a different outfit with a baseball bat and she was destroying cars, breaking windows. And that was the birth of Sasha Fierce. And that's her baptism into the new person that she's going to be, the demonic person. And she went from gospel singer to what she does now. And it's a mm. prominent thing through music, especially in hip hop and R&B. And who knows how many more it's happened to that we don't even know about or that don't talk about it. Many. And I know you basically were given that vision that that could have been you. Uh, that could have been your, if you chose to accept it. So tell us mm. then, Isha, what was that final point where there was no looking back with Jesus? Yeah, so um, I had another vision, which was um, a real powerful one this is when i was saved the second time um and this time it was just jesus that came so i was still kind of closing doors coming away from it i had made my decision now that christianity is is the root this is the truth i've done my research this is the truth i know it is and i start to see the logical fallacies of the other sex and i say right i can now see i can't fault this there's there's always a very clear and definitive answer for all of these problems that are raised about the bible and I could see them. So I basically made that decision. Now, I was still getting attacks at night from, from the demonic entities. They were still after me. I hadn't done enough to close the doors. I hadn't done enough to become God's possession in a way um, because I was still learning. I wasn't really reading the Bible. I was very early in my process. Now, one night I had a, a visitation and it was like a horror film. I remember I was lying in bed and I opened my eyes and I had a really strong sleep paralysis. And I could hear like a radio, like, you know, like when you have a radio, like an old radio, like an AM wave radio, and you're turning the dial trying to catch a signal, but we hear static. I could hear that coming from a radio in the room. And then as the stack was going, I heard this creepy old voice say, I can feel his presence coming. And I knew immediately it was the devil. I knew immediately. One thing about being in the spirit world is for some weird reason, you just download this information, you know straight away. It's not like you read a book and you learn. It's The information's just there. I knew who was coming and the whole room was shaking and then it just stopped. And I remember I was in my bed. I had the covers kind of up to my neck and then this gremlin looking demonic entity jumped onto my chest and it was like shouting in my face and it was like holding me here and like grabbing me. And... I, 
like I said, when these things were around you, you get this paralyzing sense of fear. I couldn't move. I couldn't even move. And then I remember all of a sudden this bright light appeared behind my bed. White, pure light. It just appeared. And this entity looked up in complete fear and it just disappeared. And I knew immediately it was Jesus standing behind me. I knew immediately, but I was still paralyzed. I couldn't move. Um, I, I don't know if it is in the book of John where it discusses where he sees Jesus in his true majesty and he falls at his feet as if dead. It's a similar sort of feeling because his majesty is so strong. I, I, was, I was still on my bed. I wasn't moving, but I could see his beautiful light coming from behind me. And I remember he said something to me and I will never forgive myself for not writing it down there and then. I remember waking up the next day and I told my mum and she was so happy because she, my mum is a diehard prayer warrior Christian. Um, she's tried so hard to get me to church. She's got, she's tried so hard to get me down the right path. And mm -hmm. I, re, I was gone the other direction. Isha, you know what I noticed, which I absolutely love and a lot of these testimonies of salvation and finding the truth is that there's always a praying mom or a praying aunt or a praying friend. And I see this common theme and I <laughs> see that with you. Praise God you're, for your mom, praying for it's her. It's honestly son. amazing because like, yes. like the Bible says, man, people, God likes to hear people that pray in groups. Um, multiple prayers will help you. And there was one case in the Bible where someone was saved purely because of the prayers of their friend. So prayer mm -hmm. is powerful. We have to pray every single day, not just for ourselves, not to say thank you or Lord, I want a taxi over here because I'm broke. Lord, I want a new business. Lord, like it doesn't work that way. He's not a vendor machine where you put in 50p and you get out everything you want. Your hopes and dreams just fly out. Like mm -hmm. he wants a personal relationship with you. Yeah. And you've got to talk to him like he's there. You've got to talk to him like he's your friend because he's always with you and he wants that relationship with you on a day-to-day -day basis. And having people around you that can pray for you, especially a parent, a friend, uh, a church they can go to where there's some good, good Christians there that will pray hard is so invaluable. So, so invaluable. Um, funnily enough, I watched the testimony of a guy from Uganda. You've, you've probably seen it as well. Um, of the guy who was married to a witch the day he was born. Have you seen that one? No. Oh, it's, it's an, one of the most incredible testimonies I've heard in my life. And he was a very high ranking witch. And I remember there was a part and it changed me a bit because I didn't realize the power of prayer until I saw this. He talked about how um, there was a, a group, there was a one uh, pastor and I think 19 women that he was praying with and they made a covenant with God. They all prayed for six hours every single day for 90 days. And he was sent on an assignment to make sure that whatever happens, they do not get to the end of those 90 days. Because if they do, they would have to cease all operations in the area for 75 years. That's how powerful the prayer would have been. And it just kind of dawned on me. And it wasn't just the fact they were praying, they were praying in a group and they were praying mm -hmm. for a sustained period of time. And it was every single day. And they made, and not just that, but it was a covenant with God. When you make a covenant with God, mm -hmm. stick to it because yeah. it is so important and it rained into me all oh my days just because these people were praying it they wouldn't even be able to operate in that area just because of the power of the words that they were saying but then it makes you think well the, how was the world created how was the universe created god spoke it he didn't mm. just kind of make like wave a harry potter wand or something like that he spoke it so there's power in the words right so mm. when you start to realize that and you think my days my connection to my lord through prayer is far more powerful than anything I could possibly ever imagine. It makes you want to pray. It makes you want to pray for others. I it's just beautiful. read something earlier today about how sometimes when you're in a waiting season or maybe there's not a lot going on and you're like, why isn't God doing this or that in my life? I think oftentimes there's these opportunities to pray pray more because Satan does want to keep us busy and distracted, you know? Mm. 100%. He wants to keep you away from your destiny. He will yeah. provide you with any tools you need to fail because Satan's got books on books on your entire life. He's been with you. Him and his demonic entities have been with you your whole life. So they know you better than you know yourself. They know your triggers. They know your depressions. They know things that will hurt you, right. things that will tempt you.
they will send you anything to stop you from doing what you need to do. So you've always got to remember what's important. And that's your relationship with Christ because it's personal. Yeah. And that kind of goes back to earlier what you were saying um, with the the Christians that have the light, but the devil wants to bring that out and the demons want to suck it out of you and the importance. And that's why Jesus warns us, do not be lukewarm. And there's the spiritual ramifications of that. Mm. Yeah, hundred percent. Because if you're not right with God and if you're not doing the right things, then you will be deceived because the Bible says my people perish for lack of knowledge. Knowledge is what's going to help keep you away, which is why your foundation for your Christian house is the Bible. You build your foundation based on the information of the Bible, and then you can start building the, the walls, the door, you build your house, and no demonic entity can go into that because you have mm. a solid foundation. You've got all the tools you need for spiritual warfare because a lot of places don't teach spiritual warfare. They don't teach you that these demonic entities are with you. They are using every weakness you have under the sun against you every day. They are putting thoughts into your head. In the New Age movement, we used to call it thought forms. So if these thoughts come into your head, it's a thought form that's come from somewhere else and it may not necessarily be yours. It's the same concept, but in reality, we are now know it to be demons that are putting thoughts into your head and trying to change your energy and trying to make you feel a certain type of way. And one thing I find interesting, there's always a battle going on in your head between what the demons want you to think and what the Holy Spirit is trying to convict you to think. Mm -hmm. And sometimes you might be at home and you have an argument with your other half and it'd be something really stupid, really small. And then you feel a bit like, oh, my days, like what is going on here? And then it, and then you get this feeling inside. It's like, well, actually, that person's had a hard day. They're struggling. They, that, that's not gone well. Maybe it's that. There's, there's that to consider as well. And it makes mm. you think, right? Because one of the biggest things that can lead people to hell is unforgiveness. And people mm. don't realize just how powerful forgiveness is in leading a Christian life. If you hold on to grudges, if you hold on to pain, it can lead you away from God. Because, and the more I kind of went down the road of understanding that, the, the more it made perfect sense. Because look at my life, look at the life of many people on the world who are now in heaven, who have done unspeakable things. If Jesus can go to the cross for every single one of us and go through what he went through and forgive us for that, how can we not forgive someone for accidentally bumping into us on the street? How can we not forgive someone for doing us wrong one day because they had a bad day? Why would we hold on to that anger when the person that we're trying to become already forgave you for all the things you haven't even done yet? And when you consider how powerful that actually is, you start to realize what's most important. And what's most important to you is how you're going to get to heaven, how your family is going to get to heaven and how everybody around you will get to heaven. It's not just about, about yourself. It's yeah. about, you want everybody to be there. You don't want anyone to suffer because hell yeah. is horrific. People think hell is a place where sinners can go and sin and do bad mm. things. And it's, 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 it's like a party. Uh, it's not. Hell is a place of absolute torment, absolute torment. Your senses will be 10X, 1000X what they are here. And all you feel is nothing but pain and misery forever and a feeling of absolute hopelessness forever. We don't want anybody to do that or go there. And so that's why the Lord is really having us in this hour share. And I appreciate you bringing to knowledge or bringing to light, I should say, so many pertinent truths. And I appreciate your testimony and everything that you've gone through. God is using it for this exposing and to know how good he is, how merciful he is. And you are a true testament of that. And uh, is there anything else that you want to share or what, what's going on with you now? Yeah, um, there was one other thing I wanted to add. Um, or actually, sorry, two very short things I wanted to add. Um, one of them is um, some Christians will come across arguments against the faith based on the idea that there was multiple different deities in the past that had the resurrection and the 12 disciple theory. Like I, I think they said either Thoth or Seth had the same thing and he was resurrected. There was a Greek one as well. Uh, I don't know if it was Athena. They used as an example. Um, they say that in several civilizations before Christ even existed, somebody died, had 12 disciples and was resurrected. And it's a pagan concept that was created to discredit Christianity. When you look into that, um, it's actually come from a film called The Zeitgeist, which is on YouTube. A lot of people have seen it. And it's led a lot of people astray because it looks credible. 
But if you look into the research material that they published themselves, the vast majority, I'd say 90% of it wasn't even researched. There's no actual sources for a lot of the information they give. They present it as fact when it's not. And if you actually search Zeitgeist Debunked, you'll see a video where they explain all of their sources, how poor the information actually is and how poorly sourced the information is. So if you come across that argument, please note it's called the Zeitgeist. And there's a video called Zeitgeist Debunks that you can find, which shows you all of the useful information showing how ridiculous an idea it is that this has happened before. It's not. The divinity of Christ is real. He is the truth, the way, and the life, and he's the only way. And I would strongly urge anybody who's watching this, even if you're on the fence right now, look into it at the very least. Give it an opportunity. I'm not saying you have to go to church and put your hands in the sky and sing every hymn. You don't have to be that person, not right now. Just give it an opportunity, just look into it because believe me, I was the complete opposite. I am a testimony to a lot of people that know me who are probably gonna watch this, that I was not that person, not even a little bit. So that if God can do that for me, best believe he can do it for you. And never think that the sin that you do is too bad for him to forgive. There is very little that you can do that God will not forgive you for. All you have to do is accept him Say, Lord, please come into my life. Please restore me. Please forgive me for my sin. And please show me the Holy Spirit. And move on from there. Read the Bible, get to know him, and he'll reveal himself to you over a period of time. In I'm not yours. So that, that's all I'd say on that. I'm actually looking to create some videos, um, talking about some of my experiences and giving some useful information for people coming out of the new age or people that are almost about to go into the new age for how to help them see the signs that what they're doing is wrong, how to kind of lead them away from the deception and to help them lead a better life. Um, if they become Christian, absolutely amazing and help them in their direction to do that. If they don't, um, I would always love for them to, to come down the line, but I would always give them the support that they need to make sure that they can close the doors that they opened. So um, it's actually going to be called um, Isha Christianity Network. Um, it, we've not uploaded any videos. This is a very new direction for me. And it's something that I've only very recently, within the last week, decided that I'd like to do. I've, I've been kind of umming and erring about how I want to give back to the Lord. And he's spoken to me very strongly to say that he wants me to, to help people. He wants me to spread my story and to help people who have been deceived the same way that I was deceived to move away from it and to find him and to bring his children home. So that's what the channel is going to do. We'll do some podcasts. We'll interview some people and fingers crossed. We'll help a few people get right with the Lord and stay away from sin and live better lives. So it's, it's called the Isha with ISHA Christianity network. And um, yeah, hopefully the first video may be up by the time this video comes up. Um, but there will be videos coming out. So please keep a lookout. Please subscribe if you can. Um, I would really, really appreciate it. It's not for me. It's it's for the Lord, honestly. This this one's for the Lord. So it made me feel very uncomfortable. Even doing this, it took me years to give this testimony. I always found reasons why I was going to avoid doing this. I don't know if it was mm -hmm. because I thought people would look at it and think that I'm weird or like, uh, it, it's not a normal thing to go through, right? A lot of people mm -hmm. feel like they're, they're going to be judged when they talk about things like this that happened to them. But really, how I look and how I sound I couldn't care less because if this testimony saves just one person, then it's completely worth it. So I would give it over and over if it meant that people could be saved. And that's what I'm hoping the channel could do. So I really appreciate you giving me the time to kind of share that because I've held onto it for so long and I've been told spiritually, you need to do this. You need to give this, you need to give this. Um, to share. Yes. And thank you again for coming on. Again, I, I will say it again. Your voice is needed in this hour. Thank you. And Isha, thank you. I just want to close and reiterate what you had said, which is John 14, 6. Jesus says, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. And your experience today truly testified that. What would you like to say as we close? Yeah, um, I mean, I'd like to say a short prayer for people um, and just hope that the Holy Spirit will touch them in their lives. Yeah. So, yeah, I'd like to do a quick prayer. I would love that. Go ahead and lead us. <laughs> Jesus, please, 
come down and give your guidance to everybody in the world today who are watching this video and need your love and support especially those who are involved in the new age movement as i was lord please show them the truth absolute majesty please help them to see the truth that you are the way the life and nobody will get to the father but through you please lord i pray that you help all these people get away from the darkness the spirits that control them the demonic entities that are trying to lead them to hell lord please wash yes. them away please send them to hell and allow the people to come back to you in jesus name amen amen